This is a video about ultrasound in the diagnosis of endometriosis, ABCDE. My name is Suzanne Johnson and I'm a gynaecologist from Southampton. Next we come to the retrocervical area of the torus and the uterosacral ligaments. Looking for DIE, this is a really good trick. You start by visualising the torus. So the torus is where the uterosacral ligaments attach on the back of the cervix. So I start with a longitudinal view looking for the area where the bladder, which is this, this white echogenic line, attaches to the uterus. In a line behind that is the internal cervical os, and in a line behind that is the torus. This is more or less where the uterosacral ligaments uh, attach, and I'll show you what this looks like. Uh, live, I um, start longitudinally, and then I'll rotate on this point of the torus and go transverse. So this is the view in the longitudinal plane going from one side to another. Now I'm rotating to the transverse plane. This is the torus. This is the right uterosacral ligament. And this is the left uterosacral ligament, just there. So rotate on the torus, go from longitudinal to transverse. I've got torus at the back and I've got the right uterosacral ligament just there and the left uterosacral ligament just there. And that looks like this. This is the back of the uterus again. This is the torus with the left uterosacral and the right uterosacral ligament. And there's an ovary and a bit of tube. Torus, very important area. So having looked at the torus, I then look at the uterosacral ligaments, both sides. Um, you will see them if you look at the torus specifically. Um, you can also stretch them over the posterior vaginal fornix during gentle pressure with the, the probe. The ligaments are white and they can be very thick and white fibrotic. And if there are nodules of DIE in the ligaments, they will be dark, so they show up well. This again, this is a, a transvaginal longitudinal view. This is the posterior fornix. The cervix is up there and the uterus is retroverted. And here you can see just a little bit of normal fluid in the pouch of Douglas. This dark is the posterior vaginal wall, and then the white is the peritoneum overlying it. And I'm going to show you a uterosacral ligament, which will come into view here, that when I press slightly harder, it will blend with the peritoneum. I'll show you. There is the uterosacral ligament. I'm now pressing slightly harder, and you can see how it blends into the peritoneum. So again, looking at the torus, get a longitudinal view of the internal os, rotate to transverse, and then you're looking at the correct area with the uterosacral ligaments. So the retro cervix, the area at the torus, would look like this in a normal longitudinal view, but this is somebody with endometriosis, and you can see thick white fibrosis of the torus and um, the ligaments, and you can see a dark nodule uh, at the torus. This is the normal transverse plane of the torus, and you can see here very thick and fibrotic uterosacral ligaments. So looking at the retrocervical area, looking at the torus, um, if you use high frequency, including harmonics, and move your focus up to, to very high, this is the posterior vaginal wall, then you can look at the torus and the ligaments in more detail, and you'll see a dark nodule there in this white fibrotic uh, region. So you need to be sure to move your focus up to the area that you're actually interested in and go for high frequency. Of course, if you use harmonics, you have relatively higher frequency still, and that will examine that area uh, nicely. So here we're a little bit high, you can see a bit of cavity, but this is essentially a normal torus. And in this torus, you can see a dark nodule of DIE with very thickened fibrotic uterosacral ligaments. And the image underneath is the same patient seen at laparoscopy. And you can see here is a nodule of endometriosis in at the torus with very thick ligaments um, just nearby and a lot of adhesions. And that's it. Thank you very much.